All my fellas! This is everything you need to know about Seize Battlegrounds. From tips and tricks, to optimal combos, to small details in the game. If I miss anything, make sure to comment anything that I missed. Starting off with Luffy. Luffy's first move is Pistol. Low wind up, very fast, but it doesn't really do too much. Which can be said for the second move, Hawk Gatling. It knocks down, and it seems like a combo end, but in reality, it's not. I'll show you later. On the surface, Pistol might seem like just a poke move, since it can't combo extend. However, Pistol is true into Hawk Gatling, allowing you to get out some more damage output. Just make sure you get close. Hawk Gatling also has a cool animation when you kill someone with it. For the third move, we have Red Hawk. For the third move, we have Red Hawk, which knockdowns opponents when they're standing up. However, when used on a grounded opponent, you can combo extend with it. You can use side dash or dash attack, but I would use side dash as long as you don't mash it like I did in the clip. And finally, the fourth move, Rocket, which has the same properties as Red Hawk, knocking down people that are standing up, but combo extending people that are grounded. To extend with Rocket, just side dash. I forgot to mention that Red Hawk also has a special kill animation. Putting everything together, your optimal combo should look something like this. This combo is extremely beginner friendly because it's all down slams. You rarely need to up till or do any fancy tech. Just make sure to be close to them when you barrage at the end. Remember when I said Hawk Gatling combo ends? Well, because of Red Hawk and Rocket, you can actually combo extend because both moves knock away when hitting grounded opponents. Basically, any knockdown you get, Luffy players will be able to combo, making Luffy not only beginner friendly, but making his combos really fluid and consistent. If you took a look at my health bar, you could see that I'm quite low. Why is that? Well, to use Luffy's Awakening, you actually need to die. <laughs> Here's a little showcase of all of the new animations you get when you awaken. For the first move, you jump up and throw down a Spear of Lightning. The second move will make you jump up into the air, turn big, and slam everything below you. For your third move, you somehow fit your opponent into a bag, and then you manhandle them all over the place. And finally, the last move. I'll let it do the talking. I can't really give tips for Luffy's ult, just move spam and you'll be fine. That's everything with Luffy, now we have Sanji. The first move is Party Table, a barrage that knocks back. A self-explanatory combo extender, just side dash or regular dash. The second move doesn't have too much practicality actually, it's just kind of annoying to throw in neutral. I guess you can kind of go for more pressure, but that's about it. It should also be noted that you can't up tilt or down slam into this move. The third move is a drop kick that combo extends on grounded opponents. The Gepo at the start of the move can be changed by inputting a direction. While not as combo heavy as Luffy, Sanji can get as much damage out as Luffy by doing an optimal combo like this. I just picked up the character so I didn't do it completely true, but trust me, it's all true. Just practice. Well, except for the end part of of course. The cool thing about Sanji is that Party Table works on downed opponents. This means you can This means you can go for a counter and combo start if you do land it. The dummy's a little weird, but trust me, it works. The counter itself is one of the main reasons why Sanji can put out as much DPS as Luffy because the counter does 10 damage. And now for his ultimate. Out of the three, I would say that Sanji's ult is actually the most coolest and hardest to fight against. Y you you'll see. An AoE tornado projectile that is huge and down slams. A big drop kick that I somehow missed. And a grab move that sets up for both of the moves previously mentioned. Landing the drop kick move, this move does 45 damage. That's a lot. And finally, the last move.
probably one of the best animations I've seen in a while. And finally we have Zoro. These are what his animations look like. The first move is Onigiri, where you teleport forward and slash anything in your way. The second move is Lion Song. I'm not sure if this combo extends. Somebody tell me in the comments. And finally, for the fourth move... How does this keep happening? Why did I just die? The fourth move is a lariat that'll knock your opponent back, allowing you to combo extend. If you up tilt, side dash away, and then Onigiri, if you side dash again, you'll be able to combo extend. Assuming Lion Song is a combo extend, Zoro, despite missing one move, has three combo extends, making him already super dangerous and actually puts out the most damage of the three. You guys wanted to know everything, so I bought this game pass. It allows you to have a more authentic feel when playing the game because it gives your moves voice lines from the show and here's every single voice line in the game I forgot to mention this you can hold down Red Hawk to run with it Sanji has no voice lines in ult, unfortunate. In this game, there's a lot of accessories you can buy via gold. How do you get gold? Well, you can buy gold with Robux. The smartest way is to eliminate players in public servers. One elimination will give you 100 gold. It'll be a little bit of a grind, but it's worth it. You can walk up these stairs on the map. You can't go all the way to the top, but it'll give you a pretty decent view. This game is really cool, and you just need to appreciate some of their models. But yeah, that's the end. Like if you learned something new. 